Okay, I know this sounds like a terrible idea, but it's something that I've seen across the internet time and time again. Can you take an electric car and add on a portable battery pack and expect to get any greater range? Well, I decided to kind of test this out. Um, it may not be practical, but we'll kind of examine that. Let's go ahead and look at the science behind this and see if it actually makes sense. So what can we even use to power these massive electric car vehicles? Well, meet the Goal Zero Yeti 3000. This is the largest consumer portable battery that I know of, and it just barely came out. Previously, the next largest size was a 1400 watt hour lithium battery, by, also by Goal Zero, but this is the three kilowatt hour version of that battery. So bigger than anything else, it weighs about 68 pounds, and then with the car, that's an additional 8 pounds or so. It's so heavy that it actually comes with the cart system, uh, just to be able to let you move it around. It has 3,075 watt hour battery, and it, it should be capable of powering even an electric vehicle car charger. It should be able to handle 1,500 watts continuously. Okay, so here we go. We've got two electric cars to test with, a BMW i3 with a 18 kilowatt hour battery pack and uh, a Tesla Model X 100D with a 98 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. So this thing is a three kilowatt hour battery pack. So really, you know, is it gonna make much of a difference? Well, let's, let's do a little bit of the math. So if you have a BMW i3, and it has an EPA rated range of 80 miles with an 18 kilowatt hour battery pack. That equals 4.44 miles per kilowatt hour of battery. On the Model X, it has a 98 kilowatt hour battery usable with a 295 mile EPA rated range. So that adds up to about a 3.01 miles uh, per kilowatt. So in an ideal world where the Goal Zero really supplies three kilowatts of energy to these batteries, uh, we're looking at about you know three kilowatt times 3.01 is uh, about nine extra miles of range on the Model X. And in the BMW i3, that could add up to uh, 4.44 times three, or roughly you know 12 or so miles. So you could add quite a bit of range to this little car. So uh, let's go ahead and think about all the other things though. This battery, you're gonna have to pack it around. This thing weighs 68 pounds and with the car, I think it's over 75 pounds. So A, it's pretty compact. It's heavy, but it's compact. It's definitely gonna fit in the boot of either of these cars pretty easily, but we'll look at that in a minute. So as you can see, there's basically no issue getting this device into the Model X, but I'm really curious is if it's going to fit in this low slung boot area down here with a lot of space. So let's see if I can make that happen. Okay, so as you can see, this device would easily fit in the lower section of the Model X. In fact, that cart is removable. If you remove the cart, it can fit down there flush and you could still put the topper over it. So it could be completely hidden in the battery. So, something to think about. Okay guys, so you're gonna have to excuse the wind a little bit. Uh, just the kind of day it is outside. But, um, let's see the flight to get this thing up in there. So, that actually fits in there not too bad. Uh, I still have space for other stuff in here as well. Um, but that worked out pretty well uh, in the BMW i3. So what does it take to get this thing actually charged in the car? So here we are in the car, and we've got 48% battery uh, left in the tank, and 36 miles. So let's go ahead and get this thing hooked up to that battery and see if it can actually make a difference. To get this thing going, I've got a fully charged Yeti 3000 from Go Zero. 
and I've got my BMW i3 charger. This is the occasional use charger. It charges at 120 volts, and uh, I've got it configured. This thing can take uh, 1500 watts continuous. This can handle more continuous than this can even pull. Let me show you something. Problem number one. If I plug that in, the way these ports are set up, I get a charging fault. There's no ground on this. So as you can see, there's just a hole for that bottom plug. So, two things. A, this Yeti, the AC ports actually are grounded within the unit. So, um, on this particular charger that has the, the wattage that I actually want to pull, it's giving that ground fault. So what I'm doing is I've actually created a ground fault bypass. And uh, if you want information on how to do this, it basically you connect the neutral and the ground in a box and then you're good to go. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I've got a kilowatt meter that can tell us how much power is coming out of this battery and into the car in addition to what the car reads itself. So let's go ahead and plug this in. See the kilowatt meter is on. It's at zero currently. So now let's go ahead and plug this in. Now our charge file error is gone and we've got a way to meter this and we should be good to go. So come on over here. Now you could really do this. You know, I'm doing it out of the back, but say you're at work or something and there's no charge port anywhere near your work, yet you need a little bit more range in order to make your trip home. This is the pretty much the only use scenario besides, you know, getting stranded and stuck on the side of the road. Uh, that would actually make any sense to do this. So let's go ahead and look at the meters. But you can see it's charging and it's pulling. About 1400 watts. And the battery should drain in 2.3 hours. Our kilowatt meter is running and everything looks good. So, um, so far so good in the BMW i3. The real question is how many kilowatt hours are we actually gonna get out of this battery? Uh, you know, things are usually rated at, you know, it's rated at 3,000. In fact, I think it's actually 3,045 um, watt hours that this battery has, but uh, whether that actually can be pulled out of the battery remains to be seen. Usually there's a little bit of a reserve and also we're talking some major inefficiencies here. So not only are you taking it, you know, power out of a three kilowatt battery that you may only have 80% access to, not sure, we'll find out, but you're also running it from a 12 volt up through an inverter to get 1500 amps and then you're also going into a car that has its own charging circuitry where there's at least you know 10% losses so that three kilowatts might turn into something like two or less or maybe more we'll see uh, that's why we're doing the test so um, one downside is this is going to take some time so I'm going to go ahead and let this sit and uh, we'll come back to it and see how it's doing. Okay, so one thing I didn't want to have happen is have the car running because the car doors were open, which would skew our test because it'd use energy. Um, so what I've done is I just run it right through the window there um, that you can, I mean, you can roll that window up high so it doesn't, uh, so you can still lock the car, everything's turned off, everything's secure and you could just let this charge like this. Okay guys, we've dropped uh, 0.66 kilowatts into the battery so far according to the kilowatt meter and it's still pumping out power strong and uh, so everything looks perfectly normal at this point. The battery still shows that it has 
over well about 80 percent battery so so far so good so we'll keep it keep it rolling tragedy strikes Looks like it's set okay, it had an overload fault so in this scenario what we're gonna have to do is uh, reduce the charge so we're probably pulling too many amps and if we step it down we can pull a little more juice out of it yes yeah, so in the i3 go into settings and then charging and I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down to low I believe that puts us at about 900 watts instead of 1500 watts uh, but we'll see in just a second All right, it appears we are back in business. So, max rate charging, not gonna do it. So we'll see if reduced charging at 650 watts can sustain anything more. Okay, so we're about 10 minutes away from what uh, the Goal Zero Yeti says uh, that the runtime is, so uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, it's still pushing 635 watts and it says 0.1 minutes to go, or sorry, 0.1 hours to go before it runs out of juice. So it actually held up and delivered a lot of power so far. So uh, we'll just uh, wait till it dies and see how much power we actually got into this car. All right, I just, I literally watched it uh, finish, which was great. I didn't have to rely on my camera that I had pointed at it to tell me when it was done. So let's go look and see what the meter looks like now on the car. Okay, so if we look at it, we've got, uh, we went from 48% battery to 58% battery and from 36 miles to 44 miles. So we gained about eight or so miles of range. So not too shabby. So let's wrap it up. While you can use this portable power station to increase the range of your electric vehicle, there's lots of practical reasons why it probably doesn't make sense unless it's an emergency situation. Um, while this has three kilowatts hours of power, it really can only deliver about 2.7 kilowatt hours uh, to through the car, but you still have to go through the charging circuitry of the car, which we found, you know, had losses of up to 30% because it was charging in such an inefficient manner. The slower you charge, the more inefficiencies there are. So, um, when all was said and done, you can add a 10% to the BMW i3 but that's not a whole lot of power. It could get you, you know, an extra eight, nine miles uh, if you, you know, drove conservatively. But I don't know if it's worth it, you know, to keep up that space, you know, take up all that space in the back of your car, but it can be done. So I think the best use case for this is, you know, this portable battery pack does a lot of different things. It has solar connectors. Uh, you can use it for when the power goes out, kind of an emergency situation, or use it for camping. Lots of multi-purposes for this unit. Um, but one of those can be electric vehicle rescue. I have no doubt that if I stalled out, ran completely out of electricity in my BMW, that it could actually give it enough juice to get it to the next power station or up to, uh, an outlet at least where I could start to charge normally. Uh, the Tesla is a little bit different story. By the time you calculate inefficiencies, uh, you're only, it's, you know, this is a much larger vehicle, so maybe a Model S would be a little bit better candidate, and especially a Model 3. 
would probably get the same amount of range as this uh, BMW i3. But uh, really, uh, the range that you're gonna get out of this pack into this battery is only about five or six miles, if that. So probably not worth it, although it does fit very nicely in the boot of this car, which, you know, if you don't mind carrying that around. And let's talk about another inefficiency that you introduce when you put this battery into a car. It weighs a lot. So um, it definitely does not help your efficiency, but it's not that big a deal either. If you look at the weight of these vehicles, this car alone weighs over 5,000 pounds. And this is, you know, 60, 70 pounds. That's less than a percent of weight compared to that. Not to mention the fact that this does not would not affect your aerodynamic drag by any means. So while it wouldn't improve your fuel efficiency, it's not going to hurt it too much either, you know. But if you were to drive a ton of miles over time, for sure that would that would you know be just a waste of energy to have it in there if you're never going to use it. So is it practical? Not really, but it can be done and to somewhat of a degree of effectiveness. So take this information for what it's worth. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more electric vehicle videos and whatever else I cook up. Thanks for watching.